too much pressure on the outside of a can will cause the can to implode. And now you can't reverse it. Even if you try, it will never be the same. You might be wondering, what on earth is she talking about? Why did she just crush a metal can? Well, I recently learned that exact concept in physics, and I couldn't help but think, what if the can is our world? We are the pressure outside of it. Once our world has endured all the pressure we can impose on it, it too will implode like the can. Not only will it be ir irreversible, but will also make what we call home inhabitable. Inhabitable, you say. Now, what does this really mean? We humans will end up being responsible for our own extinction. What if I told you that everyone here, the audience, me, are all in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, and that this is the only mass extinction we are entirely to be blamed for. What does mass extinction mean? The Earth has been wiped out five times ever since it was born, beginning with the continental drift, which was the separation of Pangaea, when all the continents were one big continent, and it separated, making the continents we are all now. Then, the lack of oxygen in the ocean. The third mass extinction, doesn't have a suspected cause. The fourth happened due to volcanic activity and uh, ch the change in pH in the ocean. And the fifth, the most famous one of all, the extinction of all dinosaurs. And this happened because of a meteor impact. And now we are all living in the sixth mass extinction. And the cause of this mass extinction, you ask? Humans. So, how are we to blame for the ongoing mass extinction? How is a species that have only lived on the Earth for less than 1% of the entire Earth's age single-handedly responsible for making an entire planet inhabitable? Well, first and foremost, we caused over 1 million species on Earth to go extinct. The first animal to have ever gone extinct as a consequence of human activity was the dodo in the 1600s. 422 years have passed since then. Thus, one would think that humans have had enough time to reconsider and think about their own actions. Yet, according to National Geographic, extinction is happening a thousand times more quickly because of humans. You might be thinking, yes, it's sad, living species are dying, but how does that affect me? Well, as more animals become extinct, infectious diseases rise throughout civilization and animals, which directly affects our health and chances of survival within the sixth mass extinction. This just proves that we are not just Earth's worst enemy, but our own worst enemy as well. Moreover, what makes us say we won't be responsible for our extinction. We started climate change. We caused our sea levels to rise. We caused the death of thousands of animals. We caused extreme weather. And yet we say we won't be responsible for our own extinction. One of the biggest global killers is climate change. And according to the United Nation, it affects 1 million seabirds, 10,000 sea mammals, and over 7 million people die to it annually. We humans started climate change. We crushed our home. And if we don't get it under control or try to reverse the damage it has already inflicted on our planet, then everyone should start saying their goodbyes. Growing up in Hong Kong, I have experienced firsthand the effects of severe air pollution, where on peak days, I wasn't allowed to step outside because the air quality was detrimental to my health. I still remember there would be an intercom in school that would broadcast a message saying, attention all, due to severe air pollution, children will not be allowed to go outside and play. They must all be indoors. Growing up, I thought that sucked. That's not fair. Why was I missing my playtime because there's something wrong with the air? It's not like I could see it. That is where the issue lies. 
Just because we are unable to see the effects of our actions, we think we got away with it. But remember, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And just because we cannot see these detriments right now, doesn't mean our Earth isn't suffering. Our Earth has endured climate change since the 1800s. We have caused the Earth to increase by one degree Celsius. We don't want it to increase anymore. We literally cannot afford for it to increase anymore. Because if it even increases by one more degree, let me tell you what the small little one degree could bring us. It will start off with the third of fresh waters from rivers being eliminated over a period of around 85 years. Then it would cause sea levels to rise as ice caps melt. Island nations such as Papua New Guinea, Maldives, Tuvalu, Fiji, Marshall Islands, and many more will start, be, start to be submerged as the sea levels rise. And they would be more, more vulnerable to hurricanes, tsunamis, droughts, and other disasters. Then mountainous regions will have an increased likelihood of avalanches. And as they slide down, they start to melt, which will end with the mountains losing their formation. We cannot afford for this to happen. This will affect civilization as crops will be harder to farm, such as coffee beans, cocoa beans, grapes, and much more. Not only that, the ocean will be contaminated. It's already bad enough that the ocean is trashed with plastic and junk, but an increase of one more degree will cause the sea level to become more acidic. And not only that, but decrease in oxygen and higher concentration of carbon dioxide within the water. So you can say goodbye to the perfect summer vacation in Maldives or Bora Bora, and also to aquatic life. This is because marine life will too be in danger, as there will be an increase of dead zones within the ocean, as sea mammals won't be able to survive in the climate. As a direct consequence of climate change, we're losing the edge that makes us humans, our humanity. Instead of working together to build a better world, we're working against each other. And instead, over a fourth of our world's population live in the hottest places such as Iran, Kuwait, where temperatures skyrocket at 55 degrees Celsius, a point at which the human body cannot be outside longer than about six hours because it loses its ability to cool itself down, resulting in heat strokes, respiratory disorders, and even death. Because of this, there have been mass migrations to cooler areas, which has led to the biggest refugee crisis we have ever experienced. We are entirely responsible for this. We have to own up for our mistakes and better the world. We have to change so we won't have to suffer the consequences. You may be asking, how on earth do we reverse the damage we have already inflicted on our planet? We individuals can only do so much, but if we all work together and try to make our world a more sustainable place, we can buy time for countries, nay, entire continents to do the same. You can start by taking showers instead of baths. This will reduce water waste, which will help reduce carbon emissions. Or power your homes with more renewable energy. Use solar panels instead of power stations. Start investing in more energy efficient appliances. And most importantly, speak out. Tell your friends and relatives, post on Instagram and Snapchat the importance of being green. That every person who acts on this change, the likelihood of us becoming extinct, their favorite animal becoming extinct, by just b being more sustainable decreases. Just making a small changes in our everyday life can help us a drastic amount. We can try not to be Earth's worst enemy. We can try not to be our own worst enemy. Thank you.